actually bothers me that Protestants don't have like saints and you don't have like Mary, etc. What are you going to trust in to get you to heaven? Are you going to trust in what you do, partly? Or are you going to trust simply in what Jesus did to save you? I wish more Protestants sounded like you, man. I, they, they all sound like John MacArthur to me. Hello, sir. Where are hey, you from? I'm from Australia, man. But, uh, Australia? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you, you like Jesus? You, you, you're you a Christian yourself? I'm a big fan of Jesus. Um, it's very funny, actually, that... Uh, Actually, I'm not. I'll tell you. I'll not tell you that right away. But yeah, I'm a big. I'm a big fan of Jesus. Aye, Catholic awesome. though. Catholic though. I've had contentious conversations with Australian Protestants before over this. Oh really? Oh, what, what do you yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. Like telling me the Catholics aren't Christian, that we're all from the devil, and that we're all going to hell. <laughs> I got got quite insen- in, intense. But um, I mean, yeah, I'm still here. I'm still believing. God's okay. still working on my life. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's good. Um. So let me ask you. Do you think you'll go to heaven when you die? Well, it depends on how I live my life. I believe that I'm saved. I believe that I'm safe in the, Christ, in the hands of Christ, but I don't believe that I'm safe from the cleansing flame, the purging flame, purgatory. I, I'm not, I don't feel that I'm totally safe from that. And I think that, although I know that this isn't something that... I, I don't know what your denomination is, I'm, I'm assuming, but this is like I, I might go to purgatory okay. before, I, um, before I meet the big guy upstairs. But you said you're saved. What, why do you think you're saved? Well, <clears throat> because... I was when I was christened a uh, Catholic. I was uh, christened as a as a child. I thought I, that doesn't to me doesn't necessarily mean that you're totally safe. Like there's a lot of Catholics that are that are born in Cat and christened they go to hell. But it, it gave me a good foundation. Like I, I I didn't believe for the majority of my life, and then just okay. before COVID, it hit me like a diamond bullet between the eyes, and it, it it opened my eyes. And the whole the whole world, the whole wealth of like the the, the culture, the tradition, the way of life. The things that I've been missing out on my entire life became so aware and, and it just worked for me. It just God just okay. started working for me and I started asking. Yeah, yeah. And so let's say though God was to judge you based on how you've lived, would you mm. would he find you as a good person or not as a good person? Well, I'm not one to toot my own well, I am one to toot my own horn. Unfortunately, that is one of my, my major sins is that I'm a prideful character, but I mean I have to be realistic in that I've lived a very sinful life. I, I absolutely yeah. have. I've lived a sin, life Same. of total and complete degeneracy and sin. And it's right. only the last three years I've ever, I've even attempted to try to fix that. And I fall every single day of my life. And I know I do. And I know that I do things every day that I shouldn't do. Hmm. But I think since this revelation, I'm not, I'm not comparing myself to Paul here or anything, but since this revelation came to me, or you know, it just, I've decided that I want to live my life better. And in certain ways, I have. And in a lot of ways, I have. I'm a lot better of a person than I was before, but yeah. that doesn't make me anywhere near as good as I could be. Right, right. And so, based on how you've lived, would you say you deserve hell for your sins or heaven? <laughs> I mean, I don't want to. I mean, I'd love to go to heaven. I'd like to think yeah. heaven, but it's a tough thing. It's like that's why I think that. I don't. I'm not destined for hell. I'm not one for hell, but I don't think I'm going straight to heaven either. Because to be des- to be deserving of hell, like often people think, oh, you got to be like a mass murderer or something like that to be deserving of hell. But I think mm. it's even less than lesser than that, uh, because like in society, how many crimes does a criminal have to do before the government can punish him? One. Yeah, and so how many sins would we have to do against God before He could punish us? One. Yeah, and so any time we've lied or stole or used bad language or even looked at a woman with sexual desire that we're not married to, we've we've broken God's laws. And if we've broken His laws, should He reward us or punish us for that? Punish us. And does that punishment sound like heaven or hell? Hell. Yeah. So that's the bad news, right? And I think God wants us to realize that to humble us, to make us realize, yeah, we are unworthy. We are deserving of God's punishment. So what? So so you mentioned though that you've been trying to clean up your life over the past three years, and that's a good thing to do. But just like if a criminal did ten crimes last week, but this week he's tried to clean up his life and not do any more crimes, would the would the judge who he stands for in a court of law would he just ignore the crimes he did last week? Well, no, but I right. I, I I have a way. I mean. As a Catholic, I believe that our works can help us get closer to heaven. And I try to balance out. 
I, I, this isn't an excuse for the things that I do either. Sure. I'm, I mean, I, I sin every day, but I try to balance those things out by doing actively good things. Like how, and I'm not going to like, cause it would defeat the purpose if I told you all the good things that I did. Cause then right. I would be super <laughs> bragging, right. But I'm not, I'm not going to go on about it, but I have, I try to do more God, like things if I, if I'm going to, if someone needs help or whatever, what would Jesus do? And I mm. try to answer that by doing what I think the big guy would do. You know what I mean? And I yeah, think yeah. that, that that helps me get closer to him. And I think it's a good thing. We sh- we ought to do good deeds. God wants us to do that. But in terms of, does it get rid of our punishment for the wrong deeds we've done? Like, if you do five crimes today and then ten good things tomorrow, would the police ignore your crimes? I don't think so. Ah, and that would be the same with God. Because God doesn't get bribed by our good deeds. Instead, he's a just judge, and he says, if you've broken my law, there's still a punishment you deserve for what you've done wrong which is hell. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the, the only solution we have is if God provides us with someone who could take our hell punishment on our behalf. Because if someone takes 100% of your punishment, how much punishment is left for you? None. Right. So then if you don't have to go to hell anymore, where do you get to go to? Heaven. Right. And that person who God provided was Jesus Christ. That's why he died on the cross and rose back to life on the third day. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Right. And so if Jesus does that for you, takes all of your punishment, where will you end up when you die? Heaven. So why do you get to go to heaven? Well, <laughs> believing in Jesus, of course. But I do. I, I, I believe in Jesus. I can, Jesus Christ is my God. He's my Lord and my Savior. He's 100% man, 100% God, and a third of the Trinity. I believe well, but, this. But... but we haven't even brought in believing yet. Just based on what we talked about, what was the only reason why you could go to heaven? Was it because of what uh, you Jesus. did? Yeah, it was because of what Jesus did, not because of what you did. Uh, but, right? dude, James, I uh, listen. I'm not. I have a catechism over there. It's too long. No, 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 like... no. Because, because I'm. There is a response. I agree. There's a response. But I'm just talking. We're just talking about the logic of of the atonement at this point. That the, what actually saves us is the work of Christ what he's done on our behalf in bearing our sins. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Of course, but I think that, well, it's it's our, we have to take up the mantle and the sort of, to, we have to work in his place. We have to, we can attain, God, we can become more godly through how we behave and how the things that we do, the, the ways that we worship and the ways that we love God, these things can bring us closer to him. We I ought believe. to do good deeds, as I said, yeah, and, and we ought to not sin. But as we just talked about, doing good deeds doesn't fix any bad deeds we do. So doing good deeds cannot get us any closer to heaven. It must be based simply on Jesus and what he's done on our behalf. And would you agree that Jesus dies for us as a free gift to us? Is this that Galatians? Oh, dude, you're trying to bat me into this Protestant corner. I'm not well. No, no, I'm no, not no. As smart this, as is, you. this is not a debate. This is not a debate. I'm just. This is just a good discussion to talk about, you know, heaven and things like that. What the Bible speaks about it, because there's a very famous verse. You probably know this one. It says, "For the in Romans six twenty three, it says, for the wages of sin is death, death but the yes. free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord." You've heard of that one, probably. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Yes. And so, according to that verse, it says eternal life is a free gift of God. And so, if I was to say to you, here's $20, I'll give you the $20 as a gift, but only if you wash my car. Is that $20 really a gift? Not necessarily. You're working for it, right? A free gift is something you get for free without paying for it. And so, if eternal life then is a free gift from God, from Jesus, then that means... We mustn't have to do good deeds to get eternal life. We must just accept it by faith and it's ours. This, this is, but this is what, I mean, it's, I don't know if maybe it's just being, me being a bit, I don't know how to, how to describe how I think here, but I think this, this is a, this is an interpretation that we, we, we gathered after like a long time of having this Bible and, and reading it. I think it's too, it's the, these, these can these. I, 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 I'm going to sound like a Catholic bootlicker here, but the way I'm trying to say it is that we can't truly understand this through our own lens. We need a magnifying glass. We need magisterium. We need things that, that can translate this for us because it's not necessarily, we're not the wisest people. We weren't around when these are, when these things were originally written. So people like Thomas Aquinas, they were able to interpret them in a way that, 
Oh, so, I can't. I can't but, explain myself. But 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 the only thing is this: is that if you have a magisterium, you now need to interpret the magisterium. Mm-hmm. And so you need an a magisterium about the magisterium. But then you need an interpreter for them too, and and, and it all that's, goes back. That's for the priesthood. That's the priesthood. But, but that's then you've why got we, to interpret we, the priest. Like... If you hear any words, you have to interpret it somehow. How do you know you're interpreting it right? And so the best thing is, rather than interpreting a fourth-hand account, let's just go to the, the a first-hand account. Let's just go to the accounts we have of the apostles themselves, and we can see what they wrote. Because Paul did not write in an unclear way. Right, that that verse we just talked about, the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. That's very clear. Even a child can understand what a gift is and how you receive a gift. Right, mm-hmm. and so if eternal life is a free gift, we should accept it as a free gift from Jesus by trusting that He took all of the punishment we rightfully deserve. Wouldn't you agree? I don't know. I don't know. I need to. I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't okay. like the, the solar scripture but, but, thing. If we can get. But we're not even we're not even bringing up solar scripture. We're simply just talking about how we receive this eternal life, right? Gift from from the Lord. If it's a gift, it's not based on works because otherwise it's not a gift anymore. Mm-hmm. So it must be just based on faith, trusting that Jesus has already accomplished it all for us. One moment, sir. Oh, sorry, sure. hold on. Yeah, all right. <sighs> I apologize, man. Continue. Yeah, all good, all good. Yeah, and so let's say then today you do trust that Jesus took all the punishment for all of your sins, which means Mm -hmm. you get to go to heaven. But then tomorrow you do five more sins and then you died. Would you go to heaven or hell? Hell. Okay. Now, with Jesus, do you think he died for only your past sins or also all of your future sins too? Well, future sins, yeah, of course, correct. yes. Yeah. yeah, which means even those five sins you do tomorrow, that's already been paid for by Jesus. Punishment's been taken already. So where would you end up? <sighs> well, by that logic, heaven. But then I yeah. feel like there's no real incentive to behave yourself in and to... There's a more profound incentive rather than a way of avoiding punishment. The more profound incentive is a love for God. So, like, if you're trapped in a burning building and a fireman risks his own life to bring you out to safety, how do you feel towards that fireman who saved your life? Extremely thankful. I mean, I owe him my life. And therefore, you don't want to punch him in the face. You do nice things for him, right? And so, if Jesus lays his own life down to save you from going to hell... How do you feel towards Jesus? Well, the same way that I feel about fireman. And therefore, that makes you not want to just go and do more sins against Jesus. It makes you now want to live the way he wants you to, just out of gratitude. Well, that, yes, that, that too, that, I mean, yes, I agree with that. Right. And so that, that's, but the good news is, is that, yeah, even if you happen to, if you're trusting in Jesus, you sin again tomorrow, that sin's paid for, you still go to heaven. Because it's a free gift, remember? It's not based on your performance or how good you are. Because if it was based on your performance, the standard's perfection. And you know you can't be perfect, and I know I can't be perfect either. So it has to be based on what Jesus did. But what if you don't trust that Jesus took the punishment for you? Then where would you end up? Hell, 100%. Yeah, because you got to take your own punishment then. But since you don't want to go to hell, when should you start trusting that Jesus took all of the punishment you deserve? Well, no, like, or... Yeah, from this day on, that's a good plan, man. That's a really good plan. And so then just remind me, based on what we've talked about, what is the reason why you get to go to heaven? Well, Jesus and his... No, no, I'm I'm not a priest... I'm not. I can't fight this corner that no, well. No, no. It's like a... Don't worry about with your priest, because remember, don't see it as I need to defend whatever I've been believing before. Instead, let's just try and 
um, use our logical brains that God's given us to try and reason through what is actually going to save me from my punishment that I rightfully deserve. But there's too much, dude. There's too much in the Bible that supports Catholicism, like the whole the the idea of holy relics and things like this. This is in Acts. It, when when they got like they, I can't remember exactly when, but they took like bone fragments and things like that, and pe the people were healed with fragments of bones. So they were they were healed by a, a man's shadow cap being cast over them. These are things that like that we believe in that like that you can be healed by by a relic or just by the presence of someone or, or for the from the intercession of a saint or from someone that. That is a really extremely godly but the, person. Those things are side life. issues. Those things are side issues that you know we can discuss maybe later on. But the main thing is salvation. That is the absolute main thing, and we need to get this right because it will be the difference between heaven and hell for us. Wouldn't you agree? That that's the central thing that we should get sorted out. The, I, for me, the difference between heaven and hell is is acting is living life like like a godly part like. I know I understand that the, the belief and, and things like that and faith, but I don't. It's sola fide and sola scriptura. It's like it's. It's. I feel like it's. You're. You're. Weighing, you're putting too much on yourself. You're giving your. Like it's like your own interpretation. That's why I feel. I, that's why Protestant churches are so like split. And it's. It's freaky. It, but the it's to the it. contrary. I think it's the other way around. If I, if my faith is in Jesus Christ alone to save me, I'm not putting trust in myself. I'm putting my trust in Jesus Christ alone to save. As opposed to maybe yourself, who's saying, no, it's based on me living a good enough life and being good enough and doing sacraments. Then you're actually putting far too much trust in yourself. Uh, I don't know. Maybe, well, that's right? a good point, but I can't, I, can't, uh, I can't argue against it. Because you said, you know, we should live a godly life, and I agree. But godly life, according to Jesus Christ, is living perfectly. He says that in Matthew mm -hmm. five forty eight. You must be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect do you mm -hmm. think you could do that even for a single day of your life i couldn't do it for 10 minutes right exactly so therefore why do you think that you can go to heaven based on living a godly life then it's um i don't know man it's like i can't explain to you like how uh important like this is it seems off topic but it's like i, I can't explain to you how important like things things like the rosary are to, well, to Catholics, and I mean, of, of course, to everyone, but like, it's there's just something to be said about it. That there's, I can't. Uh, it's. But how does that deal with the fact that you haven't lived a godly life, or, or even a perfect life, for a single keeps, ten minutes? It, it keeps your. It keeps you. I don't. I don't know, man. I can't. I understand what well, you're saying. You're prayerful, but sure, but being prayerful doesn't fix what you've done wrong. It doesn't. It. I thought no, it did. I just thought like praying and asking for forgiveness. No, that doesn't, because. God's, as I said, God made us as logical people. And so we're going to think, from a logical point of view, would asking forgiveness or doing good deeds fix the wrong things I've done? And so that's why I gave the example of the court of law. You do five serious crimes. You say, judge, I'm so sorry for the crimes. Please just let me go free. Only a bad judge would let me go free. A good judge would say, no, I must uphold justice. You get what you deserve. And we know God is a just judge. He even says in the Bible, he'll by no means clear the guilty. So no amount of prayers could ever get rid of my sins. I need I, a sacrifice. I, I'm not, uh, I don't know, I'm not, I, I, dude, you can't tell me this. I'm not, like, I'm, I live my life to be as, like, anti-lukewarm as possible. This is deadly serious no, to me. No, this is I, not, I'm, I'm not telling you to be lukewarm. In fact, you know when it says lukewarm in Revelation 3, verse 16, it's people who think they're going to heaven because of their own goodness, their own righteousness. That's what a lukewarm person really is. What I'm encouraged, I'm actually wanting to be far more zealous than you currently are. I'm wanting to be far more zealous in obedience than, than you currently are because this does not promote laziness. This promotes you to make to take any risk for God and do anything for Him, but not as a way to gain salvation, but because you know you're saved and you're just doing it purely out of love for God then. I mean, you made, you made a good point. It's just, it's uh, this is what I mean, but I've been told about this. I've been told that you people, because you're so scripturally, you're so well-versed scripturally, and I'm not, I have to give you that. I'm not as well-versed. I'll, I'll give that to any Protestant. You guys seem to know a lot better than we do, but that's because I don't, it's, it's not, I'm not even going to make an excuse. I just, I need to, I need to be better equipped to fight, like to. 
Okay, okay, I understand. But but don't think to yourself, I need to be better equipped to defend my existing position. But instead, let's have let's be humble and say I should be willing to even change my position if if what is presented makes logical sense uh, and 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 that would actually satisfy justice for the sins that I've done. All right? So, f- for example, when the Passover celebration, remember how they had to kill the lamb, but they put the blood on the doorposts? Mm-hmm. That is a picture of how the lamb died in the place of the firstborn son in each household, right? And so we, you need that, I need that, the lamb of God, Jesus Christ, to die in the place of us. He gets our punishment. If he gets our punishment, we get no more, no punishment for us. Where do we go? Heaven. heaven. And so therefore, why are we going to heaven? Because of Jesus, right? The sacrifice. But I don't not believe that. I believe that to be true. But it's just it's how I it's how I view it. Like I believe that like Jesus it's not that he's too far above me, but it's like I need um I have a personal I have a personal relationship with Jesus, but I don't feel like I can understand him as well as that's I don't know, man. It's like I, uh, it's it, but it actually bothers me that Protestants don't have like saints and you don't have like Mary, etc., things like this. Like not, not people that are like in between you and Jesus, but people that can intercede on your behalf. You know what I mean? Like it's or on on His behalf, on on Christ's behalf. Like they, it's like having um people like really holy people to help you that can pray for you with you to Jesus because they're in reverence to Him as well. So I believe that, but there's just a lot. There's a lot of like tradition, a lot of things that have. Come. But Jesus calls us friends. He says, no longer do I call you like strangers. I call you as friends. So if he's a friend, we can talk to him any time. Right? It even says in Romans 5.1 that, therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God, with our Lord Jesus Christ. So I know God is not angry at me for my sins anymore because that anger has been taken out upon his own son, Jesus Christ. And so, therefore, I know my prayers are acceptable to him because of the mediation work of Jesus. I don't need another mediator besides Jesus Christ. He's he's sufficient. Right? I guess so. So then, if you were to stand before God today, and God was to ask you, why should I let you into heaven? What do you think you'd say to him? Because... Because I, because I put my faith, I put all of my faith in you. Because I, because I believe that you, that you did everything that you said that you did in the Bible. And I believe that you really are working in my, in my life. I mean, it's there's not one part of me is like, like I, I this is totally true to me. There's not one part of me is like keeping me from believing this. I believe it fully, and I believe, and I, I have perfect. I have faith. I have perfect faith in this, and I. That's. I mean, I would. I would die for it tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. So then, do we go to heaven because of what we do for God or because of what he's done for us? Because of what he did for us. Right. And so if our answer to God starts with, oh, because I, I've done you're this, good. I believe that, you're good. we're still trusting in ourselves. Our faith is actually in ourselves then, right? So what should you say then if God asked you, why should I let you into heaven? Because... <laughs> because... I don't know. I don't know. Well, what, what has he I... done to save you from going to hell? He sacrificed the son. He sacrificed right. himself. So, what would you say to God is the reason he should be led? You should be led into heaven. Then. That's. Uh, I don't think that's good enough. I, that's. Uh... What? What's? Tell me. What, what? What do you want? What do you think I'm wanting you to say? That. That you. Uh, you. I get into heaven because you died for me. Spot on. And you're saying that's insufficient. That's, that's basically saying Jesus is insufficient. <laughs> no, it isn't. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that it's, that's too, that's like anyone could say that. Anyone, like literally anyone, even the most heinous. And? Are you saying, are you saying say the thief that. on the cross could say that as well and be led into heaven? But the, the thief on the cross was right there. He's seen the guy, he's seen the guy right next to him. He's seen the centurion. He, he did no good in his and yet he I, just placed his faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, "Today you'll be from the paradise." Dude, that's not. That's you can't because what's the point then? Like, there's I. That's 
dude, you've like short circuited me a little tiny bit. Like this happened, this exact thing happened to me a few weeks ago. Some guy said that Mary wasn't a virgin or uh, that she was, she had mul- like more children after Jesus. I, I like, I recoil in horror that he said this. <laughs> this is the second time this has happened to me in like a month. Okay, I okay, but this, but this is a really good thing to recoil over because it's showing that you're thinking through it. I like that, that you're not just wanting to dismiss it straight away. I like that. Dude, um, this is this is a 2,000-year-old... But, 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 but just remember, the Pharisees also recoiled and mocked Jesus when he said certain things to them, right? So let's. But so we've got to remember that if, if Jesus says that for God so loved the world, that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Jesus presents it there very clearly. You believe in Christ, you don't perish, you have eternal life. He makes it simple as that. Right? And so therefore, if you, you said you said before, your trust is 100% in Jesus. 100%. Right? Well, that means, what it means to have your trust 100% in Jesus is that the only thing getting you to heaven is Jesus dying for your sin and nothing about what you've done. Right? I mean, but but I feel like because I believe in because I believe in Him, the Holy Spirit acts through me and allows me to be to be a better person and do yeah, good deeds, which brings me closer to Him. No, I no, feel no, like hold up. I'm, at, but... I'm at the bottom of the ladder. I don't know. I wasn't well. I'm not anymore. When I was when I just became a Christian, I was at the bottom of the ladder. I didn't know anything about it, but through through continued faith and continued belief and reading the Bible, I feel like the Holy Spirit has come into my life and works through me. Like it, that, I think that keeps me close to Him, and if I didn't, I would fall away from Him. So I I agree. The Holy Spirit works in us. If we're trusting in Christ, the Holy Spirit works in us. We do good works now for God. But we don't think that those good works play any part in our entry to heaven. For example, go back to that fireman mm-hmm. example. When you now bought the fireman lunch, you cleaned his car, his house. Are you going to think? You're going to say to people, "Hey, look." I got saved from the fire, partly because the fireman saved me, but also because I cleaned his house. No, you're not, right? You're simply going to... When people ask you, how come you got saved from the fire? You say, well, the fireman saved me. You don't point to, well, I did this. You say, the fireman saved me. And so if God asks you, why should he let you into heaven? You don't say, I did this. I'm now working differently. You say, Jesus saved me. He died on the cross for my sin. That's why. You know, God, you can let me into heaven. But that's like too, I feel like it's too simple. That's too simple of an explanation for something that's so complex, so ancient, and so important. This is, a, it's, that, this is why it's a, it's, it's a You might say it's simple, theory. but people want to make it complicated when God made it simple because it means he gets all the credit. If you got to heaven partly because of what you do and partly because of what Jesus did, half the credit goes to you, half the credit goes to Jesus. But if you go to heaven simply because of what Jesus did, he gets all the credit. And that's why God set it up this way. Do you see that? Yeah. And it's... oftentimes it's because we think we're not that too we're not that bad of a person. And maybe that's what's holding you back. You're actually thinking, I'm not too bad, I'm not like a really, really bad sinner, so therefore I can make myself good enough to be acceptable to God. We've got to come to the point where we realize, no, I am the chief of sinners. I'm the worst person alive. I can't do anything to fix my problem. I need God to rescue me. And so are you willing to recognize that you cannot save yourself, but only Jesus can save you just based on his actions? I feel like I'm not qualified enough to answer that question. I don't but again, know. Don't base not based on qualifications. The thief on the cross wasn't qualified either, because it's not based on qualifications. It's based on you hearing the message. Faith comes by hearing. Paul says. So you, you, in this conversation, you've ne- you're getting to hear the message, and you can actually be now placing your faith no longer in yourself, but now in Jesus alone from this very day on, and therefore know you're going to heaven. So, like, so I mean, do you believe then that all of the all of the things that like that I I mean, it's not me. I'm not I'm not get it's, it's weird. I'm not giving myself credit. I would give the Holy Spirit credit. I give God credit for the good things that I that I've done. And again, I don't want you to like say oh, you're so good because that's not the point. But it's like doesn't wouldn't that doesn't that 
like like I mean doesn't I mean I don't want to make it sound like it's like a little marble system where you get a little treat every or a point <laughs> every time you do something, but I feel like that that counts for something. It it has to it has to count for something to be to be like because I've met evangelicals before, and um, they're really like some of them are kind of abrasive or you know I they're not they're not terrible people. I, I have a lot right, of respect right. for Protestants, but like they're they're not. I don't know. They're like I'm they're like holier saying. than thou, but it's. I, yeah, and I don't know. I, they they wouldn't do good things, but they they believe that just because they put all their faith in just him and sola scriptura and sola fide that they're going to heaven, and I can't accept that for some reason. It's, so, it doesn't separate. So right. Remember, like that example where you did the five crimes today, you did ten good deeds tomorrow. The ten good deeds didn't fix the five crimes, did they? I but to a certain and, degree, I think it does. I can or I. Really? How? Not, but that would be bribery. Really. That would be like, hey, judge, I did the five crimes, but take a look at these ten good things. Just t- turn a so, blind eye to those five crimes. That's bribery. God's not going to accept a bribe. But what if what if I'm like an ass to someone, and then I feel so terrible about it. This has actually happened to me many times, where I'm like needlessly rude or something to somebody. Mm. It really hurts me later on. I really feel bad about it, and then I'll go out of my way not to be, and to be actively kinder to people to... Yeah. That's so. Is that not? That's a good thing, but it future obedience <laughs> doesn't fix past wrongdoings, right? So if you today, um, yesterday you committed adultery, but today you're like, I'm going to go out of my way not to commit adultery. That doesn't fix the fact you committed adultery yesterday, and that was still wrong. But then, is that a permanent? Being on your soul, then can yeah. you not wash that away with good works? No, no amount of good works will ever wash away any sin. Dude, don't tell me this, dude. Hold on, you don't tell me this. I thought, well, I'm almost certain this. This, no, 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 that can't be true, man. Why? That can't be true. You have to, you cleanse, clean yourself before. At least if you sin, you have to clean yourself, and it's like you must. That's what that's what that's Tenants what Islam must... but that's what Islam teaches. That's what Buddhism no, teaches. No, 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 no. Teach. No, 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 no. They all teach that similar idea in that they think you cleanse yourself by future good deeds or future obedience. But you think but God's made us as logical people, and if you think logically, does doing good ever clean yourself up from the wrong you've done? Because think about it, when God judges you, he doesn't judge you based on let's let's look, let's weigh up your good deeds versus your bad deeds. He doesn't do that. On Judgment Day, God just simply looks at, have you broken my law ever in your entire life? And he's going to see, yeah. oh, yep, you've done this there, you've done that there, you've done that there. He doesn't look at your good deeds. He just looks at, have you broken my law? Just like a judge in a court of law. A, good, a judge doesn't weigh up a criminal's good deeds versus bad deeds in his life. He just looks up, has the criminal broken the law? And if so, he's guilty and deserves punishment. So, like... God's gonna know. I mean, I obviously, I know obviously he will, but like God's gonna know every single. He's gonna mention every and all these terrible things that I've done are permanently on my soul. Yeah, permanently on your record, and That's, you can't I do can't, anything to I fix it. I can't do that much. No, but, I have to say the, dude. I said the, the rosary. That can't be. That's like a bar of soap. But the you better, can't. I think, the sooner you realize this, the better it's gonna be for you. Right? Breaking my be- heart, dude. Well, I'm glad though. I'm glad this is breaking your heart in some way because it's going to make you realize I can't cleanse myself. No amount of rosary, praying, or any other thing I could do could ever clean myself up because I've got a permanent stain against my record. God says I must be perfect. I'm no longer perfect. Therefore, I need someone who is perfect, who's willing to swap places with me, take my hell, and he'll credit me with his perfection. And that's how we're we're righteous in God's eyes. Not because we're we've cleaned ourselves up but because jesus's perfection was credited to our account when we trusted in him lesson man this is a really really random question but i have to ask you so have you ever heard of the battle of lepanto no i haven't the battle of lepanto i'll just hold on the battle of lepanto i'll just tape i'll tape in lepanto sure. right yeah this is something that happened and this is a turning point in the history of europe and we wouldn't be here if this didn't happen and this happened as a result this is a, a massive Ottoman Islamic force was in the, in the Mediterranean Sea pushing towards Western Europe, and okay. a tiny, like a small fleet of the Holy League. This, like, um, this is just around the time of the Reformation, right? So Catholicism was kind of it was kind of on the ropes a little tiny bit, and around this time, 
um this was like it this could have been it for everyone and uh the just before this happened they they all said the rosary every single man that went on these boats to fight the ottomans said the rosary and because they were like massively outnumbered and i mean upon i mean as as soon as they finished saying the rosary dude the wind changed direction it started pushing them towards the ottomans and they were able to like crash into the ottomans and board their ships and fucking slaughter them dude and told and save save all of christendom this this would we wouldn't be having this conversation if that didn't happen and i can't i can't explain that there's nothing in the bible that says that that's true but that that has to mean something man that has to mean something but i i've had the same similar things where someone said hey look i prayed to my hindu god and therefore my son got healed now are you going to think oh therefore hinduism is true because that occurred or you're just going to say hey look coincidences can happen is one thing or second it can just be god's kindness god can choose to do favorable things for people not because they did something but even in spite of things that they do right you're i don't know man you're just too smart i uh i <laughs> dude what part of australia are you from i'm from brisbane brisbane that's inland right no it's on the coast east coast of brisbane uh, of australia oh, okay. east coast What's the capital of it's uh is that Brisbane? It's capital. No, cap capital's Canberra. And that's inland, right? Yeah, that's inland. Yeah. Dude, I know that um, Adelaide. I used to have a, a woman from a long time ago from Adelaide, oh, okay. and she used to, she used to call it the the city of churches or something. Yeah, that's. She a was a massive, yeah. massive evangelical Christian, and um, she sounded she sounded like like her, but like smarter. It's weird. It's <laughs> I don't have do you, so you don't have any like veneration for mary you don't have any veneration for saints you have any veneration for the people i, I that... know that i'm a saint the reason is is because that's how the apostle paul declared what saint is a saint he says in first corinthians chapter 1 verse 2 he says um you've been called to be saints together with anyone else who call who's called upon the name of our lord jesus christ so if you've caught up on the name of, name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you're trusting Him. You're a saint, according to the apostle. But Paul. that's but this is what I mean about the magisterium because that is too that that I that the the alternate um, interpretation of that is calling on Jesus Christ as in performing miracles, not like just calling on Him, etc. But it's per, the performance that, of miracles. But that wouldn't make any sense in terms. Of, he's, so he's saying everyone in that church is a saint in the Corinthian no, no, church. No. He says, you've been called to be saints. He even says it to the Romans as well in Romans 1, 7. All of them are saints. Well, that wouldn't have implied they all did miracles. Even Paul says in Corinthians, not everyone does miracles. So it can't be, it has to be based on a miracle. I don't know, man. Like, but the reason, I... why, the reason why I think the Roman Catholic Church has invented the idea of that only certain people are saints is because they've departed from grace, thinking that it's purely by grace, and they're thinking it's by performance. And they think these certain people have got so many good deeds, they have an excess of merit even, that uh, we're going to class them as a really special person above every other Christian, because it's all tying back to the, this our discussion of thinking that they think they can wash away sins by future obedience. But future obedience never f fixes past wrongdoing. Otherwise, Christ would not need to die on the cross for you if your future obedience could fix your past sins. So you think, like, the Lamb of God is the only thing that can wipe, wipe away, like, hmm. sins? Yeah. It, it, says, it says in Revelation, those in heaven have made their robes white in the blood of the lamb so the blood of the lamb has made us clean nothing about us it's all about christ i wish more protestants sounded like you man i they, they all sound like john MacArthur to me they all sound a bit uh <laughs> a bit anti a bit anti anything i remember listening to john MacArthur, and i almost started crying with rage because he said that we're all or like uh that we're all going to hell like oh. every every single catholic is going to hell i was infuriated <laughs> Wow. I don't know, man. That's I crazy. Don't like that. No, don't hey, look, but ask. the re but the reason why I share this is because I do want you to go to heaven. I really do, and I know that if your trust is not in Jesus alone to save you, you won't make it into heaven. It's like this: if I'm trying to give you a gift, a really nice gift, but you insist on paying for some of it, if I want to give it as a gift, I'm not going to give it to you if you insist on paying for it. 
And so in the same way, God wants to give you the gift of heaven as a free gift. If you insist that you must do something to earn it, you won't get it. God will reject it. God, God won't give it to you. And you'll therefore have to bear your own punishment. I need to, I don't know, I need to get, this is edifying. I like that word. Um, I need to get, I need to get more serious and I need to get more serious. Like I'd have my favorite Definitely. verses, et cetera. I like my, I like certain books and I love reading like the Beatitudes, et cetera, but I need to get more serious about it. I absolutely do. This yeah. has inspired me in that mm-hmm. regard. And ah, I don't know, man, you're too good. I don't know. I'll encourage the... you to read these three chapters, even tonight. Read Romans 3, 4, and 5. Romans 3, 4, 5. Well, I don't, really, I don't need to write that down. Yeah, so Paul really stresses in there how it's not by works, it's only by faith alone. And you can see his argument there. It's a very sound argument and easy, easily understandable as well. And I think if you read that with an open mind, you won't come away from that thinking that your efforts play any part in your entry to heaven. But why, why does James say that faith without works is dead? Yeah, because people misunderstand James. I uh, James, I love that James has says that, because he's simply saying true faith leads to obedience. It's not saying that obedience or the good works saves you, but that the good works will be a fruit if you are truly saved, if you truly have faith. Right? Does that make sense? So, if somebody, let's say one of your friends claims to be a vegetarian today, but then you still see him eat meat for every single meal, is he really a vegetarian? No. Right. So his works evidence he's not really what he claims to be. And so if someone claims to be a Christian but has no interest whatsoever in living for the Lord, that would be evidence they're not really a Christian. They're faking it. Hmm. So you don't believe in Lent? You don't believe in... in... Hey, if you want to fast on certain days, that's fine. It's not... It's not something you have to do, but it's something if you want to choose to fast for certain days, that's okay. So do you, like, I mean, this is kind of a dumb question, but, like, do you not believe in, like, not eating meat on Fridays because Jesus, like, didn't, the good, you know, Good Friday, he didn't, or, oh, I don't know. Or, so or I, no, I, I, don't, I, I don't hold to that tradition because uh, if you don't want to eat meat on Friday, that's okay. But you don't elevate it as, like, this is a command of God, I cannot eat meat on Fridays. Otherwise, you're doing what the Pharisees did, who elevated their own doctrines, their own ideas to the doctrines of God. But if you think of it this way, this is what, this is, okay, right, I, I forgot this is a, a decent argument that I have, and this is, about, this is about as good as it gets, but if we're to act more like Jesus, if we're to act as Jesus did, if, he, if we want to be like Jesus, why not act like him? Suffer for 40 days and 40 nights the way that he did, and then, you know, cut something off that you love as Jesus did, act like him, act like Look at the veneration. Following the logic, following, by following that logic, you would also have to get crucified. Following the logic, you would you would not be able to own a home. Jesus says, Sometimes. "The Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head." That means you should be homeless, not just for forty days, but for every every and every day out of the year, right? For the three years of his public ministry. But uh, but also, it's I mean, one of the Ten Commandments is to honor thy father and thy mother, right? And mm-hmm. if Jesus Christ is our God, and I mean, dude, you couldn't get more important than Jesus Christ. And look at look at the veneration that he gave his own mother. He said, behold, this is your mother. He said this to sort of all of us, right? And if we we're to respect Jesus Christ, why not be like him and honor his mother in such a way that he did? She's a part, she was a perfect, perfect woman. And it's... it's, well, it's, but, it's hold on, but there's a leap, leap there. So honoring somebody is not saying that they're perfect or or saying to pray to them, honoring them. Like me honoring you means I'm not going to be rude to you, disrespect you, um, I'm going to show you perfect courtesy. That's a way of honoring you, right? But if mm-hmm. I started praying to you, hopefully you'd be like, hold up, what are you doing? Don't pray to me, right? Yeah. And so I think that's the same thing with Mary. She had a special role in giving birth to Jesus, very special role. But even herself, she never claimed to be perfect. In anything she said, in her Magnificat, the song that she sung, she even said there, I rejoice in God, my Savior. Now, if some, if she needed God as her Savior, the only people who need God as Savior is those who have sinned. All right? That's why we need God as our Savior, because we're, we're a sinner. And so she was a sinner who God was able to use to give birth to Jesus. And that doesn't affect Jesus in a negative way, because it's not as if like sin is transferred through the bloodline or anything like that. 
Instead, Jesus was not a sinner, didn't have original sin, because he didn't have Adam as his representative in the Garden of Eden. And that's why he was born without original sin. But everyone else has got original sin. Is that actually what that is, that he didn't have Adam as a representative? Yeah. That's, that's actually... Hey, you know what? I didn't know that. I didn't know that. But I, I thought it was because that he was he was, I mean he was immaculately conceived because yeah, Mary was not person and perfect and she was also immaculately conceived she was I mean not not in the Christ yeah. way but like she was born perfectly sinless and yeah was that's what some people have said life. but there's no basis for that and it makes far more sense how Paul talks about in Romans that someone about a representative so Adam was the representative for the whole of humanity except Jesus Christ and so but when a person comes to trust in Christ, they've now got a new representative, Jesus Christ. And they're no longer in Adam, they're now in Jesus. Hmm. And that's hmm. why Mary didn't have to be a, 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 a perfect person um, to give birth to Jesus. Do you think Mary committed sin in her life? Well, according to her own words, if she says, I rejoice in God my Savior, that would imply yes. Um, oh, um so but but that's but that's okay because it doesn't affect jesus it doesn't affect jesus even but she was she him. was the ark of the new covenant she was and that's why she's always portrayed well, in blue no but hold up why she do you say ark. she's the ark of the new covenant what do you mean she bore the new covenant she was i mean she that was doesn't mean she's the ark, the ark of the new covenant she she just had the role of giving birth to jesus christ but that doesn't mean she's the fulfillment of the ark of the covenant uh, it just means she had that role and and then her role actually in the, the new testament is very minimal if you look at it she gave birth to jesus and then nothing much else is talked about her very minimal role in that sense but in fact even at one stage um, jesus almost rebukes mary and her, and the rest of his earthly family for their lack of faith in jesus uh, when uh, even they thought in Mark chapter 1, it says Mary and, and the basically the family of Jesus were saying, Jesus, you're out of your mind. So they're in some way dishonoring Jesus by saying he's out of his mind. And then and then there's even one woman who said, look, blessed are the, is the, the breast at which you nursed and you know the womb that bore you. And Jesus says, no, yeah. blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and keep it. So you're, you're even more blessed if you hear the word of God and keep it than even Mary is, according to Jesus Christ. Mm. She's blessed to be able to give birth to Jesus. Yeah, that's a blessing. Just like we're blessed to be able to be entrusted with the gospel. That's a blessing. But the the archangel said to her, he quote, he mean he didn't quote. We I mean this this prayer came from this verse. I I assume, but heal Mary full of grace. He said that to her. She was so do you know what hail? Grace. What does the word hail mean? Well, hail Mary, Ave Maria, like I hail, like. So you know, I mean, you know, when you're catching in, a bus, in a way you're putting the palm leaves down, like that, right. like sure. So when you're catching a bus, right? What do they always say? You got to hail the bus driver, don't you? Right? Don't say that. <laughs> no, 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 no. But what does the word hail mean? If you look up literally in the di in the dictionary, what the word hail means, it doesn't mean worship doesn't mean worship it doesn't mean praise them it just means get their um attention right so you say well hey it's a greeting it's, it's basically a greeting it's a greeting hey hey bus driver i'm here pick me up i want to be picked up right and so in the same way when it says hail mary in any in modern english because hail is an old-fashioned term in modern english it just mm. simply says greetings mary O favored one, O one who has received grace. Remember, grace is unmerited favor. So there's nothing inherent in Mary that makes her special. If grace means unmerited favor, it just simply means, hey, hey, Mary, g'day, Mary. Um, you, you have this role now of giving birth to Jesus Christ. Just like that, but he could have chose anyone, but he chose a perfect, well, he created no, her no, no, perfect. No. No, it doesn't say perfect. Nothing in the text implies. In fact, Mary doesn't even affirm that she's perfect by affirming that she needs a savior. So she, because can God choose to use even people who are sinners to accomplish his purposes? 
Mm-hmm. Think yes. of Abraham. Was Abraham more noble? Not really. He lied about his wife. He had some distrust about God's promise. He had he went and married his his uh, maid servant or Sarah's maid servant and and all this sort of stuff. So he wasn't faithful. Think of Noah. He got drunk. I um, mean, every page, even David, right, a man after God's own heart, committed adultery with Bathsheba, murdered Uriah the Hittite. So God uses sinners to accomplish his purposes. Something I have a lot of respect. That's just, uh, besides you guys, uh, Protestants are really good with the Old Testament as well. So that's, uh, that's good. I, I can't, <laughs> I, the Old Testament's too, it's like, even I, it's like too much. I don't, uh, but I don't know, man, it's like... So, so that's why, if, so that's why God can choose a woman, Mary. Yep, even though you're a sinner, Mary, you're gonna have this role. See, from day one, man, I have been told the absolute opposite. I can't. It's like I, it's, 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 it's almost like it's turning my stomach here in this. I know but... it's different to what you thought. Do you know even Jesus affirms John the Baptist is even a, probably has a higher role than Mary does. Well, I know. I mean, John the Baptist is a saint, but he's. Uh, I wouldn't. I mean, he has a my, higher role. According to Jesus, Jesus says, "Among those born of woman, there is no one greater than John the Baptist." Where did he say that? I don't remember. Yeah, he says was it in, was... in Matthew. Um, it's in Matthew around about verse chapter eleven when John's disciples come to Jesus and say, "Hey, Jesus, are you the one to come, or should we look for another?" And then he says, among those born of woman, there's no one greater than John the Baptist. Yet, anyone who's going to be in the kingdom of heaven is going to be even greater than John the Baptist. So basically, John the Baptist had such a special role of being the forerunner to the Messiah, the one who announced, this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. It's a far more special role than even Mary had, according to Jesus Christ. But then Jesus makes the point, but anyone who goes to heaven is going to have even a more amazing role there than even John the Baptist did have here. You make a really good kiss. <laughs> but uh, I have to do more reading. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not well Check it with enough. the Bible. Check it with the Bible. It's always what I say. It, it, it is the standard. So let me ask you then, based on what I've shared with you, does doing good things have any part in you going to heaven? Fuck, what you've told me, it would imply no. Um, but right. it's, uh, for in my own life experience, I, feel, I find that not to be, I just, it's not, I mean, I'm not affirming myself. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just like, I, dude, I keep it, I keep it really, I keep it really kosher with Jesus. He can't tell me the stuff I have. I'm like, really, I'm on the same page as this guy. And I can't, I can't think of like, I can't do this. It's too but explain why is it like if Jesus didn't want his church split, why is it so? Why is the Protestant like the that thing so brutally split in the Catholic Church as well? Even the Catholic Church split. I mean the Orthodox and but mm. you know what I mean. Like but like as far as we're con- like as far as I'm con- like the Roman Catholic Church is the oldest organization in the entire world and it has been around. Jesus Christ, as far as I believe, established it. He he, he put Peter on that throne as a steward on uh, for him on earth. And I think that that line, although we've had terrible guys in the post, we have an absolute demon in the post right now. Those guys have kept the faith <laughs> for the most part. Those guys have kept the faith for the most part. Have you ever heard of Pius the Twelfth? Pius the Twelfth. Pius the Twelfth was the last great pope that we ever had. The when guy did he was live? Truly from 19, well, he reigned from 1938 or 1937 to 1958, something like that, and he died. Okay. And he was he could not have been more holy. The man could not have. He he worked. He, he's like he worked magic or something. It's hard. It's it's <laughs> so hard to explain. Do you see the point though? Even it's interesting. You said your current pope, you would agree, is like a demon, basically. He's like, absolutely, so... absolutely Freemason, dude's not real. He's a right. Creep. So then, even that is proof that um, you cannot trust a pope like that because each pope is going to say different things. You have one that says this, one more conservative, one's more liberal, and that's why the the pope or the magisterium cannot be the standard. Because they're going to contradict each other each generation. But we've had the same. We've had mostly the same rules. I mean, up until about nineteen. Well, uh, this is what I mean. When Pius XII died, 
Varrican too. Do you know about that? Maybe not, but like yeah, I've heard of Varrican too. Yeah, yeah. It changed. It changed a lot, and it didn't right. change it for the good. So this is why we consider like, well, I'm not like a set of a campus or whatever. The people that believe that the hop hasn't been a pope since then, but I believe that he was the last great one, and that it was changed. Something happened. It was infiltrated right. by Freemasons. And there's been changes. If you look, if you look at the history, there's been popes, even not just the past hundred years, but years before that, where one says this, and then a few generations, the pope will say something different. And they've contradicted each other. In fact, that was one of the reasons why Martin Luther is like, hey, look, popes have contradicted themselves. I've got, and he gave reasons. And that's another reason why he left the Catholic Church. But the whole idea <laughs> of apostolic succession that Peter somehow, like he was, obviously he's an apostle, but mm -hmm. that he transferred his apostleship or his authority to someone else, there's not any evidence either in anything Peter said of of or in in history that he actually did that there's no basis for it right jesus didn't even give up an instruct give some instructions hey peter after you leave make sure you give your authority to someone no we don't see that instruction either instead we see the apostles being appointed by jesus christ to lay the foundation of the church but now the foundation's been laid you don't need apostles anymore we instead just build on top of that foundation that's already been laid with pastors, teachers, and evangelists, as Ephesians talks about. And that is why there are no more apostles today. You had to be a witness of the resurrected Christ to be an apostle, according to Acts 1. No one today has seen the resurrected Christ, so therefore there are no apostles. Do you believe you don't? I'm mean, gonna tell you, you don't believe in any sort of apparitions or anything, do you? Like the Jesus or Mary or saints visiting people? Um, like God can do anything. He, God can do anything He wants, but and God, God can make angels appear. But what, to be an apostle, it says you had to be have lived in Jesus' time, been with Him since the start of Jesus' ministry for the three years, all the way until His death and His resurrection. So even if someone claimed to have an apparition, they weren't still living for the three years with Jesus during His public ministry. I don't know. I feel like. It's just too much, man. Why is but believing in Jesus, believing in God, is so complicated? Whenever like he's, t I take one step out of my cut, like my Catholic square, one step out, and I'm already like, dude, I feel sick. I can't, like, like I, yeah. I, it's weird. Like I can't. I thought, like, you know, it's it took so it took three days. Paul, the Apostle Paul, before he got converted, he was a chief opponent of the church. He hated Christianity. Yeah. Road to Damascus. It, God had to humble him massively by blinding him. And God left him blinded for three the, days. And he ate yeah, no remember, food, yeah. no I remember water. that. I read that. Right. Yeah. yeah. And so he was, he would have been feeling horrible after knowing what he'd been doing. And so it's okay that you start stepping out of that Catholic circle. And you might be feeling, you know, uneasy. You might be feeling um, like lost, Paul, I would feel lost. I'm, I'm still in it, I, but I'm like looking out the window now, and it's like, dude, it's like so, it's like a big wasteland. It's like there's just, I feel like there's too many. But dude, it's what's not. With the Amish, you'll see, with the you, there might be wasteland all around, but you'll see Jesus Christ, and if you can see Jesus Christ, head towards Him. It's, I don't know, dude. What, dude? Then what do denominations exist for? Well, denominations are uh, just different kinds of, of churches, and they might just have small differences. Generally, they have just small differences between each other, not on the major, just on, on non-essential. And so you can go to a denominational, or even just a non-denominational, it doesn't really matter, church, as long as it's faithful in teaching that we're saved, not by what we do, but what Christ has done for us, and they teach from the Bible. And so... If someone gives you a gift, do you have to do any good things to get it? No. You don't have to work for it. You don't have to pay for it. And so if Jesus is offering you this gift of salvation today, him paying for all of your sin, would you have to do anything good to get it? Um, no. No. And so I'm hoping today you're going to accept it because he won't always offer this to you. You could die at any time, and when you die, there's no second chance. You don't end up in purgatory. You end up in hell 
because you have to bear your own punishment if you haven't trusted in Christ. So today is the day of salvation, the Bible says. I don't know. Man. I can't, I can't just, I can't just, uh, no, it's, you make a really good point, but I need to go and do some yeah. extra research on because this, it's but a the big, research it's a you should really do is in the Bible. Read it for yourself. God has given us a book that's actually very clear. It's very easy to understand. Even a child, child can grasp it. Jesus says, let all the little children come to me because he, he didn't say, no, you've got to get an advanced degree before you can understand the Bible. No, it's that's a simple true. enough message. That's true. He did say he. What did he say? Like, uh, I remember. The, I can't remember the exact verse. I haven't read it a long time, but it sh- sort of shocked me when he said that. Like, um, the like he he got a child and he said like to be like him. And mm. then not long after he said like if your if it if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. If your if your eye causes you to sin, mm. so like, I mean, I know the guy was just being he was being dramatic. He was being hypothetical, but like, yeah. as if really, as if, I was pretty. I was insane. I don't know, man. I just, yeah, yeah. And so are you willing to come to Jesus like a child, realizing... Because do children earn or buy the food that their parents give them, or do their parents give it to them freely? I thought, I I just... It's so weird to me, the thought of just, like, that's it. You just say, yo, I love Jesus, and that's that's not... No, no, it's not about even loving Jesus. It's not based on loving Jesus. It's about trusting that he died for your sin. Now, that makes you love him. But if it was based I, on your love for him, that's still based on yourself, what you've done. But I, I do believe that fully, 100%, that he died for my sins and he did it for me. Not just like, not just for me. He did it for me and everybody that has ever to come and everyone that has ever, well, not everyone well, that's ever been, but everyone that's ever to come. Only those you right? trust who's done it for them. So ultimately, if you don't trust, he doesn't pay for your sins. You pay for it yourself then, right? <sighs> and so do you believe that he paid for 100% of all of your past and future sins? I'm going to say yes, mom, but I have to do more reading. Okay. Because if the answer is yes, then how much punishment is left for you to still get? None. Which is why they can't be a purgatory, because they've got no punishment left. And so therefore, where would you get to go if you're trusting in Christ? Heaven. Yeah. This is the good news. (laughs) See it as beautiful news. That this God is not good news. You made me sick. <laughs> what was I, that? I don't know how to feel this. You made me sick. This isn't good news. This is awful. <laughs> I don't know what to think. I've never ever, dude. We literally fought a war against Protestants, dude. I've never even had. A, I've never had like a true conversation. Like I'm from Northern Ireland, right? I don't know right. if I already told you, but we had a we had a really really bloody war with these people, mm. and this I can't. I couldn't. I just couldn't, man. It would be. I don't know. Yeah. It's too much. That's, I need to do a lot more reading. Do you know who also, like the Jewish people, had a lot of hatred and animosity towards the Samaritans? Do you remember that? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And yet, they the, the apostles had to learn that even the Samaritans can become believers in Jesus and are saved. Right? And so, therefore, even though you may have hated Protestants before, now you can say, hey, look... Maybe they've got some good stuff that I need to learn from. I respect them, but I don't know. It's their theology. I don't know. It's 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 really convincing. It's like you make excellent arguments, but it's like it's too simple. I have to. I, it's like it's. It, that's why it's so easy to understand. It's because it's so snappy, so simple. Just love, just love Jesus and he accept no, no, and die no, for no, you no. across. It's not loving him. Your it's trusting it's that he died for your sin. Accepting the sacrifice yeah, and saying believing. it with your mouth. That, no, you don't. It's one, not but... even that you have to say anything with your mouth, because even mute people can go to heaven if they can't say anything with their mouth, right? Because otherwise, that would still imply, well, I've said these three words in my ha- mouth. No, it's simply nothing in my hands I bring. Simply to the cross I cling. Right? It's not about you confessing. It's not about you saying a sinner's prayer or walking an aisle somewhere. It's simply realizing I deserve hell for all my sin. But Jesus paid for all of my sin. I'm going to heaven as a result. So what is what are you going to trust in to get you to heaven? Are you going to trust in what you do, partly? Or are you going to trust simply in what Jesus did to save you? I, 
I just I'm gonna go I'm gonna go where the spirit takes me. I don't where the spirit takes you, well the spirit is allowing this. Faith comes by hearing, the apostle Paul says. And so this conversation could be the conversation you need to say, Well the spirit's there's no coincidence. You know, out of forty thousand people God connects us together. You're hearing the good news today. God wants you to accept this free gift because you realize you are rejecting the gift if you don't accept it. You can't say that. I'm not rejecting right. anything. That I would never reject anything that Christ gave me. If I'm if I'm offering you a gift, but you insist on paying for it, are you not rejecting the gift? Yes, you're. Yeah. I mean... And so, if Christ wants to give you something as a free gift, which He says in Romans six twenty three, and you say, "No, I need to buy it or clean myself up to get it." You are rejecting the gift from Jesus. Then what have I like? I mean, if that's true, then what the hell have I been like? What has been working in my life this whole time? All this time that I've been praying, all this time that I've been, you know, I, mm. I did. I ask the saints for intercession every day. I prayed. There's a. I mean, I have a calendar that every month. I. I mean, I. I pray to Saint Joseph every day in my life before I leave the house. It's. I, and it works for me dude it's like i'm safe i'm i'm always like safe i'm always healed if i get hurt i do brazilian jiu-jitsu or whatever anytime i get hurt anything like that i'm always safe i'm always like kosher because i always ask for help but I always... say, so did the hindu who's been praying to the hindu god and they've been safe for the past three years as well but that's not proof that hinduism's true and this is not proof that praying to that saint was a good idea Right. Instead, it's God's kindness that he's allowed you in these last three years to now, to no longer just be atheistic or just, you know, be completely rebellious, rebellious, but actually now care about God in some ways. That's a good thing. But what you've come to is the law of God. And Paul says the law of God is not there to justify you, not there to make you right before God. It's there to bring the knowledge of sin. So I'm glad you're seeing, look, I ought not to swear or lie or steal or look at porn or get drunk. I, I should not do that because that's sins. But you would know that you still break that law all the time in some ways, right? Mm -hmm. And therefore, how could you be justified by the law if you're still breaking it? And, you've, and it doesn't get rid of the past history of the times you've already broken it. And so it should make you broken and realize, I can do nothing to save myself. I need Jesus Christ, who's done it all on my behalf. Hmm. So that prepared you for this conversation. If, you, if we had this conversation four years ago, you may not even cared about any of these things that we're talking about. I wouldn't have. But no, I, I mean, I, 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 I like any... Even like anyone who has like a, a faith in, in Jesus Christ, even like Mormons, I have like respect for them, even though they're not true. I don't know. Right. I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah they're I, not true. I, yeah, they they believe in all crazy stuff. <sighs> Who's worse, Mormons or Catholics? Well, both believe in a form of salvation by works, and therefore both don't actually have salvation if they're believing what their church teaches. Now, at least Catholics will hold on to the Trinity, which the Mormons don't. So that's, a, yeah. that's another flaw in the Mormonism. They, they believe in aliens or something like that. Yeah, they, and they believe in a lot of other crazy ideas. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You can become a god yeah. yourself, even. Yeah, yeah, like God, the God of our universe walked the earth at some point. That yeah. That's weird. They're like, um, whatever God once was just man, and then he became God, and then you can become God one day too. It's just really craziness. But, but I guess the point is, is that, do you know when you're going to die? No. No. Could be today, right? Mm -hmm. It's possible. And so if you died right now, where would you go? Dude. I really hope heaven, because he, he, like, he knows that I, he, but yeah, again, you're going to say that thing about the gift. His standard's perfection. Have you lived up to his standard? No, absolutely no. not. And and no amount of good deeds ever fixes your bad. So where would God have to send you? Hell. Yeah. That but you're telling me, dude. You. 
what you're telling me is that like all of all of my family members, like all these people that I have prayed for constantly since they died, are are dead and they're gone and they're in hell. Because I like, dude, my best my the reason I became the god in the first place was my best friend and my cousin died in a car crash like that. And I, wow. I, didn't, I never got to say goodbye to him. And we were on bad terms. The last time I seen him, we had an argument. Wow. And he left. And he had never seen him again. And uh, and that destroyed me. But it, it, I was rebuilt by, you know, believing in, in God and, and, you know, becoming mm. religious and, and zealous. But I, you're telling, like, this is making me, like, you're t- what you're telling me is that these people are, I'll never see them again. And, like, no matter how much I prayed for them, or ask Mary or Jesus or Joseph or anyone to like help them that they're in hell and they're never getting out. And I don't know their state. I don't know what they were believing before they died. Right. But if they didn't trust in Christ, then they have gone to hell. But this is the thing. If you, um, the best thing for you to do is first of all, for you to not end up in hell with them. In fact, you won't even be with them. It's darkness. It's loneliness there. You don't see anyone in hell, right? So if you go to hell, you're not seeing anyone there. The best thing for you to do is to believe the gospel message, know that you're going to heaven, and therefore you can help your living friends and family who are still alive and share the message with them so that they can go to heaven too. Jeez. And I can't, and you, you, of course, you don't believe in praying for the dead at all, no? That doesn't work. Well, it's not going to change anything. It's not going to change anything because the only option of having salvation was during life, you trust that Jesus paid for your sin. If you didn't trust that, you pay for your own sin and you're getting what you... And those people who go to hell are getting what they deserve. It's not like God's doing something unjust by sending them to hell. They broke God's law. They got to get God's punish for, punishment for all eternity. But they weren't... They But they didn't deserve it. They deserve cleansing flame. They deserve... That they deserve to be, they deserve to be there and know what they did wrong. But they were still, he was still a good, he was a person that if God, or I don't know if he had given, if well, he was given the opportunity, it's just, I just wish that he had taken it. Do you, yeah, absolutely. And, and you can't change the past, but what you can do is think about all your other friends and family members, how you can help them to know the way. I don't know. I've got crucifixes and pictures of Mary and Jesus all over my house. I don't know what to do. <laughs> Dude, I thought I was. Matter. I'm pretty. Um, Just like you know, I chat to some Buddhists and they have Buddhist statues all around their house. Things change, right? They can come to trust in Christ and they'll get rid of some of those things. What denomination are you? Are you any denomination like Presbyterian? Uh, I just call or... myself a Christian. I just call myself a Christian. I personally go to a Presbyterian church, but I don't call myself a Presbyterian. I just call myself a Christian, and I try, yeah, line up my beliefs just with the Bible. Hmm. And you, were you, you were you never a Catholic on life, or were you always? Yeah, never a Christian. I became a Christian at probably about the age of fifteen, and it, that simply happened just by reading through the Bible. And seeing the truthfulness of it, seeing my own sin, and how Christ was the Savior. You know how you mention like, we often think, oh look, they no one no one deserves hell, or they didn't deserve hell. But I think it's really helpful to us for us to realize our sins are not minor offenses before God; they are serious. It's basically cosmic treason. Because if I was in your house, right? And you, out of your kindness of your heart, I needed a place to stay. You said you let me stay in your house, and you set the house rules. But I and I said, hey, look, I'm not going to listen to any of your house rules. I'm going to do whatever I want in your house, and I could not care less about what you have to say. How would you feel if I said that to you? Heavily disrespected. Right, you'd be greatly offended, and you probably wouldn't let me stay there much longer, right? the same thing god has given us a beautiful universe for us to enjoy he's been so kind in giving us this place and we've all said god i don't want you i want to live life my way not your way in your universe we are committing cosmic treason then what do we deserve for such willful rebellion against our creator hell yeah every person deserves hell 
there's no such thing as a good person then. I don't know. Did I need a? I don't know. I need a bath. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know where. I don't. I don't, I don't know where to put myself. You, you, Jesus is offering you this spiritual bath where he cleanses you. He takes away all your sins. All your sins get credited to him. All of his perfection gets credited to you. So on judgment day, God sees you as spotless because he sees you through the lens of Jesus Christ. But what, but what then if this is all wrong and I get to the party gates and Mary stands on there and she's got the snake under her heel and she's like, you absolute idiot. You absolute idiot. You walk away from it. What if that's all? What if this is all right as well? I don't know. Well, that's but that's not even going to pass because think about it. Oh my God. What I'm encouraging you to do is to trust in Jesus Christ alone to save you from eternal hell. If Jesus Christ if sacrifice was insufficient, then we're all doomed, right? What could me relying on my good deeds ever do? Because by by trusting in two things to save me. If it's, I think it's Jesus plus my good deeds, I'm now no longer trusting 100% in Jesus. I'm trusting 50% in Jesus, 50% in what I do. But the Bible says even our greatest deeds are like filthy rags in the sight of God. Filthy rags. I, I remember that that lady from Adelaide said that a lot. Filthy so, rags. Yeah, the filthy rag. The best deed you've done is a filthy rag in the sight of God. So why would our good deeds ever play a part in our entry into heaven when Christ's work on the cross was perfect and completely sufficient to pay for our sins I don't know I... do you remember there's a verse you probably know that you might have heard this verse before in Matthew 7 verses 22 to 23 it says on that day, on the day of judgment, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And then will I declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. You've heard of that one before? I have. It's yeah. my favorite cha- It's like my favorite chapter. Matthew 7 is like one of my okay. favorite things in the entire chapter. Matthew 7, chapter, uh, or chapter, verse, uh, chapter 7, verse 6, my favorite verse are in the entire Bible. The oh, parts nice. before swine. Ah, oh, okay, I, uh, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I know that, yeah, I do know that. So these, these people who are saying, Lord, Lord, to Jesus, what were they thinking was the reason why they should be led into heaven? That, well, that they're doing mighty works in his name. Right. So they're trusting, at least partly, in their own actions to save them. And that's why he says, depart from me. You want to be, you want to think your actions play a part in you going to heaven? Well, you're going to be judged on your actions. You're a sinner. A worker of lawlessness is anyone who's done any sin. You're a sinner, so off to hell you go. So either your trust is in partly what you do, or it's completely in Jesus Christ and what he's done. And if your trust is in Jesus you're not going to be rejected on Judgment Day. He says, those who come to me, I will by no means cast out. So have all my prayers to Jesus been for nothing? Has he not heard any of it? Well, he knows everything already. So he knows even when an an atheist prays, he knows what they're saying. But your prayers haven't been acceptable to God yet because you haven't got peace with him yet through our Lord Jesus Christ. But from this day on, it can change. I don't know. I don't know. I feel sick there. What's your name? My name is Ryan. What's yours? Ronan. Ronan, hey, that's a cool name. That's a good one. So, Ronan, let's say one of your friends says to you, I think I'm going to heaven because I'm a good person. Would they go to heaven or hell? Hell. Yeah, and why? Because that's not that's not why you go to heaven. Right. He's trusting in himself, not in Jesus, so he goes to hell. But what if you had another friend who says, I think I'm going to heaven because of two reasons. 
First reason, because Jesus died for my sins. Second reason is because I'm a good person. Would they go to heaven or hell? Heaven. Now, are they trusting only in Jesus to get them into heaven? Oh, right. It's a trick question. No, but yeah, that, but that makes sense to me because that's how I was raised my entire life. I can't right. just say that on its own. Of course, they, well, wouldn't they go to heaven? That doesn't, if you put all your faith in Jesus, but also because you're a good How can person, you put all your awesome. faith in Jesus if part of your faith is in yourself? <laughs> see? <laughs> No, I but I don't see it like that. I see it as I put my faith in Jesus, and as a result, He works the whole he, the Holy Spirit works through me. Yeah, yeah, we do good works as a result, but you don't think that's part of the reason why you're going to heaven. I'll give you an example. Yeah. If you're at a train station, and you've got two trains waiting there, and they're about to leave, they're going in opposite directions, and you decide to put one foot on one train in one train and one foot on the other train, and as the trains leave. What's going to happen to you? You're going to get racked. You're going right. to get messed up. Exactly. So you cannot be on both trains. You, you've you got to decide, well, I can't trust in both trains. One train I'm going to go in with the one I, the place I need to go to. And so that's the same thing. If you trust in two things to get you to heaven, that's now trusting 50% in Jesus, 50% in yourself. And that will wreck you. You're not going to be saved. You have to place 100% of your trust in Jesus alone and nothing about what you do. Damn. You're good, Ryan. <laughs> hey, good. God is good. Only God is good. But I, I'm glad you're thinking through this. I really am. And this is why I'm spending this time with you because I, I so deeply care about you. I want you to be in heaven. I did, I did, I don't know. I don't know anymore. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> but but what you do know is your trust should be 100% in Jesus to save you. Do you know that? Would you agree with that? I... Okay. I, I, I agree. And so then, how much trust can you have in yourself then? None. Right. That can't be based on your prayers, your rosary, your cleansing yourself of sin. But what's the point? It's 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 just I don't know. Like, what's the point then? It's like I don't know. Same reason why why did you buy lunch for that fireman who saved your life? Because he was just he was just a really great guy. Right. Well, he th yeah, he saved your life, and so. Why do we now do... Why do I go and sh bother to share the gospel with anyone? Why do I read my Bible every day? Why do I do these things? Not just get me saved, because I know I'm saved. And I love the Lord who died for me. That's why I do it. Gratitude is one of the best motivations for doing good deeds. If you're doing good deeds out of a, I have to do this... Then that's nowhere. That's that's not that's not even very good compared to doing it purely out of love for God and out of gratitude to Him. Damn. This is gonna revolutionize your life, man, for the better. I don't know, <laughs> dude. Listen, I uh, don't listen. You haven't won anything. Shut up. <laughs> you haven't done anything. <laughs> you haven't changed anything. I don't know. <laughs> oh. Just remember, don't. This is not a debate. Instead, this is... Uh, um, uh, it's like you've got one foot on both trains at the moment. And I'm saying, quick, get onto the train. That's, that's going to heaven. And you're like, no, I want to put one foot on both. Can't, man. Damn, man. You're cold, dude. That's icy, but it works. You're good. <laughs> you spit it You spit it how you think... Or how, well, how it is to Protestants. But, oh, it's bizarre. I don't know, man. I just... So man, I uh, it's I gotta go, I gotta go and do. I don't know when yeah. I gotta just go. So how are you gonna find? So what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do with what you've heard? Tell me what you what are you gonna do with it? Well, what I'm gonna do is um start reading the New Testament front to back again, get Good. updated, get some more, get my you know get get get. I'm a bit rusty on, on it, but like I need to. I ha I have read the entire New Testament. I swear in my life, okay. but I, I they changed my whole life. But um I need to get back and read it again. This was about a year and a half ago. I 
okay. completed it. Yeah, get into your Bible every day without fail, man. Every day without fail. God wants us to get into the Word. But read Romans 3, 4, and 5 even tonight before you go to bed. Mm-hmm. And realize this, that you may not wake up in the morning. You could have a heart attack through your sleep. You could have a brain aneurysm. I hope not, but it's possible, right? And if you didn't wake up in the morning, where would you end up? I don't know. I don't know. Why do you still say you don't know? You know how many sins you do, and you know how you fail every day. Hell. Hell. All right. God's standard is absolute perfection. He will not let even an idle word you say go unpunished. And so you know it'd be hell. And think about the torment of hell. How it's a place where you're going to be weeping, gnashing your teeth. You're going to be feeling forever guilty for all the wrong things you've done. And there's no relief there. Even after a billion years of being in hell, there's still nothing to look forward to. Like uh, like Lazarus is the guy that owned Lazarus. The, yeah. That guy could literally see Lazarus. He uh, he wanted, did he try to get someone to tell his family about it? Yeah. Something like that. Oh my goodness. Exactly. Maybe the people who died in your life are like, I wish someone could tell me. They could tell. Don't say that. Don't tell say you. that. I'm going to be sick. Yeah. <laughs> but maybe, right? They probably, because if Lazarus was uh, the rich man who went to hell, was like, send someone back, my brothers, that said, don't come here. This is a way of, if, if those family members who died, if they went to hell, they would love it if you hear this message and believe it today. So even before you go to bed tonight, think about this, think about you deserve hell, but then just trust that Jesus took all the hell you deserve. And then it'll be like a weight lifted off your shoulders. You're going to be skipping for joy as you know, yes, I'm going to heaven. Christ paid for my sins. And that's going to make you far more zealous for the Lord than you ever have been before. I feel like I couldn't be any more zealous, man. I'd... Well, think about when's the last time you read your Bible, man. Well, that's true. That was a, that was a, at least a, at least a week ago. That's yeah. You wouldn't go a week without food, right? So your zealousness can definitely increase. It's good. Hey, yeah, it's a good point. Got me there. <laughs> Damn. That's a man. God bless you, man. I'll be praying for you, dude. Me. So, so your name again was Ronan. Ronan, right? My name yeah, is, I'll, I'll, I'll give you my full name, my full Catholic name, as soon as you we'll have this conversation. My name is Ronan Christopher Paul Maximilian Colby Jones. Oh wow, there's so, like six names. <laughs> Max, Maximilian Colby was a, a wonderful man that died in Auschwitz. Uh, Saint, obviously, and Christopher Paul, self-explanatory, wow. but I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Hey, that's cool, man. Well, anyway, but Ron, I'll be praying for you. Um, but I'd love to hear from you as well. If you, I've got, I'll send you either. I've got a TikTok, Instagram, or YouTube. You could check out. The username is needgod.net. So if you want to send me a message on any of that, feel Dude, free to do that. I literally was speaking to a guy. So you're the guy that I was talking about earlier on. Oh, what? What do you mean? Needgod.net. Some guy sent me a thing earlier on saying, "Watch this guy on YouTube." Are you like a YouTuber? I do do some YouTube and Instagram and TikTok, so you can check that out. Yeah, if you want to. Hold on, have you been on like a lot? Because I feel like I was talking to a guy. Either this is a crazy coincidence, or God is like fucking with me right now. But I swear on my life, I swear on Jesus Christ, dude. Like uh, three hours ago, I was on this, and some guy said to watch NeedGod.net. Are you serious? I swear <laughs> on my life. I swear on. Where's my Bible? Yeah, you don't have to swear. I, I believe you, man. I, I believe you. Swear to God. Hold on. You're the guy he was talking about. And <laughs> now, so... now, I really, now I really know you're from that guy, if you're from the big guy. Oh, wow. Praise be to God. Hey, yeah, God doesn't make mistakes, man. He's trying to get your attention. Two times today, <laughs> even. the one com- uh, Two times God sent people to you. What, is the, what are the odds? <laughs> Holy smokes. Listen, Ryan, God bless, man. Take it hey, easy, send me right? a message, though, when you, after you've thought about it, if you've read through Romans 3, 4, and 5, I'd just love to hear an update from you, man. See, hey, this is what I'm thinking of, you know, this is, I, I, I want to rejoice with you. Do you know how it says, you know, the angels rejoice when a sinner comes to repentance? Mm-hmm. And so, I want to rejoice if you decide to come to trust in Christ alone for your salvation, man, I'm going to rejoice with you. And, because you're going to be buzzing, man. You're going to be so excited. 
because uh, you know your sins are forgiven. I'm going to be empty. I'm going to be empty. I'm not a knight anymore. I'm a Presbyterian. <laughs> not a, no, a, mean, Christian, not, a Christian. I'm Christian. Not, I'm not a holy warrior. I'm not a knight anymore. I'm not a no, no, You know what you are? I'm You're a saint. You'll be a saint, which is even better than being a knight. You're a saint if you trust the Christ. Right? You're a new anyway. creation in Christ. Old is gone, new has come, Jesus said. Yeah, or what is that? The dead, killing the old man? Like that, like, uh, the, or was that the, our, our old thing? Is the yeah, old so that, that as soon as you come to trust in Christ, God's made you new. New desires, new heart, uh, everything's new. That's why you have new affections. And you know what, Paul, Paul had all this history within his Judaism. He was like circumcised the eighth day, people of, of the people of Benjamin, and all this sort of stuff. He even was zealous in persecuting Christians. And Paul mm. says in Philippians 3, whatever gain I had from all those things... I had to count as loss in comparison to knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. So could think about it. Paul had to give up. He was a, a persecutor of the church, and he had to say, now I'm no longer persecuting the church. I'm part of the church. And you can be the same. You can be someone who says, I used to hate Protestants. I used to, you know, now not. I'm now one of them. I'm now someone who's trusting in Jesus Christ alone. Be like the Apostle Paul in that. Count your Roman Catholicism as loss in comparison to knowing Jesus Christ, your Lord. Ah, uh, I will do. I will read those. I will read three, four, and five tonight. Good. Hey, man, it's been a pleasure chatting to you. And just know that if you do reject this message, you'll be even more accountable on Judgment Day, and your punishment in hell will be even worse. Knowing now that you knew the way, I hope you don't reject it. I want you to be in heaven with me, with me, with you, man. God bless, Ryan. Thank you very God much, bless you. sir. See ya. Thank you.